Good morning, folks. Thanks for joining us uh, for today's database in memory office hours. Please let me introduce your host, Andy Rivenis, who is going to be running today's session. Andy, over to you. Great. Thanks, Maria. Hello, everybody. So I thought we'd, um, as the last uh, office hour or database, I almost put on the tweet the last office hours, but the last one for the year, uh, I thought we'd cover, let's see, get rid of this. I thought we'd um, talk a little bit about um, SQL Monitor active reports, because I always, when people ask whether they used in memory or how do they know they got benefit from an in-memory query, I always say, well, did you look at a SQL Monitor active report? And I have one up here um, as, uh, to start off with. But actually, let me, um, what I wanted to show, so part of what prompted my uh, two, twofold, my desire to talk about this um, was, because we use this in our blog posts and I have it in the implementation usage white paper. And I talk about how to, um, validate that you used in memory or that in memory showed um, benefit. And so on our blog, I have, uh, this is our blog or blogs.oracle.com in dash memory. And then if you go down to the, the menu, it's hard to navigate, but the, the resources page, which I brought up here, I actually have on here a uh, technical brief that basically describes, oops, I'm flying past it, describes how to generate a SQL Monitor report, and I recently updated it, uh, and that's it here. So if you click on it, it's just a PDF file you can use as a reference. But um, to show the difference with um, not only uh, SQL Monitor reports, but the 19C version. And I, what I was uh, uh, thought was interesting here was that I added in a couple of sections of what we were going to talk about is how you can tell that you used uh, database and memory and uh, CPU because we actually, in a SQL Monitor report, differentiate between um, regular CPU and CPU used for in-memory processing. So I was proud of myself that I finally went through and updated this to, uh, to show that. So as a good reference for you if you forget and want to use uh, SQL Monitor reports and don't know how or don't want to go through all the documentation and figure out how to use it, there's a nice little script right here. And that was a, kind of the impetus to, to do the session today. Because I do get asked, and very recently I've got asked several times about, um, about how to measure performance and how to see uh, how you um, uh, can uh, determine whether database, excuse me, <coughs> database and memory uh, was used in your query. And so I have up here to start off with our session. Did I forget anything? I don't think so. Oh, the, oh something that Maria reminded me of, of was to mention that um, SQL Monitor Active Reports do require the database and tuning pack license. So um, I'll talk a little bit about other ways that I've used and other people will use to check on um, execution plans and performance, but to access SQL Monitor active reports, you do have to have the diagnostic and tuning pack. Uh, so I'll, we'll mention that. But what I wanted to, to, to uh, highlight in here, not only the new format, so in the past, we, uh, SQL Monitor active reports have been displayed using Flash, and I'll have some examples of that because I just used um, some of my previous examples as opposed to generating all new examples. But in 19C, there's a new format, which is what you see here. And uh, I'll show you a little bit about how I generated that. But the key or one of the key points to talk about is not only will you see, oops, let's see, we didn't get quite get, so you can move the columns around, but, but notice that we have table access in memory full for our line order table and our date dimension table. And then notice the activity percent here, and this doesn't quite display, and to move this around, oops. Oh, did I, oh, I think I used, I think I cut down on a, a couple of these columns so it's easier to see. But notice this activity column here. So we see the, the percent uh, of the total time, the total activity, and notice that if I highlight this, I get that CPU in memory. So I see that I used, so 14% of the execution time in this query was spent doing uh, CPU in memory. And we'll talk a little bit more about um, some of the key parts of that in which you can look at in other examples. 
And then we spent some time joining and we spent some time uh, doing the aggregate or the sort. Uh, overall, this time was only six seconds, so this doesn't add up to that much, but this is a very easy way and kind of the, the point of the whole session today is to be able to determine you know, how much time was spent in different aspects of the execution plan. Um, not to get too far into the, the weeds, but there's also other information in a, in a, a SQL monitor report, things like um, predicate information, you can access predicate information. Um, I don't remember what the uh, uh, filter predicates. So there's actually quite a bit of information. And then the binoculars. And we'll take a look at the binoculars for this hash join. Tells us a little bit about the, um, uh, the mechanisms used for the hash join. And we'll uh, come back to that. I'll show you an example with join groups. And so that's one way that you can determine whether you used uh, join groups, which was a feature in database and memory we added in 12.2. So um, let's see, what, anything else here? I guess not. I did, I did ad lib a little, uh, Maria, because a couple of my examples I realized weren't quite what I expected. So, I, uh, so you might go off script a little bit, but um, so how did I create that? And both in the um, technical brief I kind of pointed to, but in literally the SQL that I generated, Hopefully you can see that. Let's make that a little bit. Uh, zoom in. Where's my zoom? I just use Command Plus on the keyboard. That normally yeah. works to zoom it in. Uh, but we can see it pretty well, actually. Okay. The, the right. font is, is pretty good. OK, so we'll just we'll, But uh, notice that um, I did use uh, Alter Session Set Statistics Level All. Um, I, that, typically do that to make sure we get all of the statistics associated with it. And since my query ran fairly fast, I did put a monitor hint in as well. So those are two key um, uh, aspects of, of doing this if you don't get um, the data like safe through. So the couple of ways that you can generate a SQL monitor actor report, enterprise manager will do that by default for queries that run longer than five seconds and um, or go parallel. And then if they're less than that, you can use the monitor hint, which is what I used here. I just put the no vector transform just so that um, since we're on 19.5, the tendency for uh, Oracle now, uh, the optimizers always want to do a vector transform. So I just kind of put that in there to make sure that it doesn't do that. But the other key point was literally just this section of code. After I run the query, then I just run that, and that will generate uh, an HTML file in this case. I spool it, and that's what created that. And so it's actually pretty simple. Or again, if you're a uh, happy path and you have enterprise manager or EM express or whatever we're calling it now in the latest 19 C version. I don't know if you remember what that is. Do we change um, the name, right? I think we did. It used to be database express, but it's a really good question. I'm not hundred yeah, percent sure so, what we call it. Well, yeah. but so you when can you do also, the install, it'll show up, but yeah. For so. the cloud people. Yeah. You can get it in the data and the cloud uh, data management. Uh, as well, you can go in there to the performance hub and generate uh, SQL monitor reports. Yeah, which and actually, I don't know why we're struggling with this. I actually put it right in in there, so I talk about it here. Uh, I think actually EM Express is called something else, but or Cloud Control, and you can actually go into the that area and then click on the monitored SQL and see all of the SQL monitor reports that are automatically created if you're using that tool. So. Um, Again, you can refer back to that if you're curious about it. But um, what Andy, I, just one thing on this yeah. one. You, uh, can you show us the SQL so we know it is the same query that oh, you were sure. running? Yeah, but, so that's another, that's a good point. You can um, actually click on all sorts of areas in a SQL monitor report. And what I did is I clicked on the actual SQL text. And that's a little small, but you can see that that SQL text is the same that's right here. And so you can um, uh, validate the SQL that got run. Um, perhaps you have similar SQL where you might not see all of the, or there might be a, a bunch of different SQL statements. And so you can actually go through and do that. Actually, there's other areas. Uh, it's a little harder to see on this one because it's small. But uh, there's an activity a tab, metrics tab. So you can kind of see uh, whether you did I.O. Hopefully, in, with database, remember, you didn't do I.O. Um, and how much CPU is used, 
especially, um, and we'll look at a couple examples with parallelism as well, but there is actually a wealth of information within the SQL Monitor report. So um, that's a good point to talk about. And this is a slightly different than, I'll show you a couple of the Flash um, versions. And you still can actually use Flash if you want, uh, but by default um, in 19C, we have this new, it's, uh, it uses uh, Oracle Jet, I believe, or Java Jet, uh, it's a Java thing. I don't think it's actually Oracle, although I guess Java is Oracle, so maybe it is. But um, yeah, it's a little bit different format. Trying to get out of the Flash environment since Flash has got its own uh, issues. But um, for our purposes, the point is to be able to display um, the activity. So um, with that, I think I'll move on. Unless you had something, anything else, Maria? Nope, that was it. The next, uh, so let me get rid of that. I'm going to save that. Well, this will probably pop up again. So let's, and then um, the other thing I wanted to highlight is in a lot of the blog posts that we do in our in our hands-on labs, I tend to, uh, and again, this is the same basic query uh, show because it's character-based, it's easier to look at. Uh, if I run the query, um, I will then just do a DBMS X plan and display the information. But notice the one of the there's not a lot of information here about runtime and and how what actually happened in the query. Although we do get predicate information as well. Um, and then one area that SQL Monitor doesn't do is the session level statistics, which uh, we use in a lot of our examples to also help show um, what occurred, what work took place and some of the benefits that uh, a database and memory uh, um, allows or shows things like in memory dynamic scans, uh, predicate pushdowns and how much um, uh, work was done scanning the data as opposed to uh, having to return all of the rows back to the upper layers of the execution plan. And uh, that you can still do, um, but you don't get that through the SQL Monitor reports. You have to go to V$ session stats, which is what I use to display that. So SQL Monitor isn't, the, isn't gonna do end to end. There are some other areas of information that you might have to collect. But again, the big point is it's a nice visual representation of the execution plan and where time was spent. And so that's again, kind of the focus. But I did wanna show that. And then I actually had another example, another DMMX plan example that I used to use quite a bit before I started using SQL Monitor reports, <coughs> excuse me, to show actual rows and actual time. So there are other um, uh, um, options that you can use with DMMS X plan. And so I was just gonna point that out. Again, not as nice a format in my opinion as what we get with SQL Monitor reports, but I was gonna, I wanted to point that out as there are um, other ways to get at this information. In addition, there are uh, third party tools uh, and SQL developer even that can also display in various formats. And I think the, one of the big takeaways I always try to stress is that making your analysis time-based. In other words, knowing not what the optimizer thought it was gonna do, but what actually happened. And, um, and so that was kind of one of the things I think makes SQL Monitor so powerful and so much easier to use than trying to go back and s with some of these other tools is that, especially if you're using EM Express or Cloud Control, is that it's already there and you can just use it that way. Um, or, and it's fairly easy to generate too. So, um, but I did want to point all of those, all that, those other options out to kind of contrast that with why I think SQL Monitor reports are um, pretty useful. And then lastly, I have here, I try to put all sorts of information. There is, uh, there are various forms of SQL monitor that you can run. It runs actually, notice in this package, DBMS SQL monitor, and then it calls report SQL monitor. And in this example, I actually used rather than the active report, which is HTML based, I said text. So there's an option to do text based. Uh, again, I don't think it's as nice as the HTML-based. You don't get to 
point and click and see additional information, but it does give you um, a, a character-based uh, representation, which for us can sometimes be nice for blog posts and, and communication, but um, not, I don't think it's powerful for actually figuring out where time was spent and what the benefit that database and memory provided versus no in memory. So um, with that, let's get to a couple of uh, other SQL monitor reports. And so this one is a flash-based SQL monitor report. Um, actually kind of like the, the formats and like we, I was talking to Maria yesterday about the colors, since I had trouble with colors, I think that's uh, uh, useful. But notice here, again, CPU in memory. So we spent 81% of our time in this query in the activity column on table access in memory full for the line order table. And I use this example um, both because it shows Bloom filter usage with the hash join. So we have our hash join and we've created Bloom filters for uh, the supplier table, actually the part table and the date dimension table. And we're applying those Bloom filters uh, as we do the scan of line order table. I tend to tell folks that the best or fastest in-memory query you can do is one where all of the time is spent, and we got pretty close on this one, all of the time is spent in scanning and accessing the data in the column store. And so, um, and this makes it very simple to see, you know, ideally this would be uh, uh, even higher, but of course we're doing other work within the execution plan, as you can see. And so it makes it um, a very easy way to determine that, yeah, we got quite a bit of benefit from database and memory in this query. What else should I point out? Or I think I'll just, I'll flip to the next example, and maybe a couple other, um, other things to point out that, now this one I, I did that uh, doesn't use database and memory, doesn't do, doesn't have Bloom filters enabled, mainly because I wanted to show, notice here, now we access the line order table, table access full, but check it out, IO requests. So now we can see that we actually did IO, which, obviously from an in-memory standpoint, wouldn't be what we'd want to see. And so now you could contrast this, not only did it take a lot longer, um, but you, if you highlight this, you can see that you used, notice you used regular CPU. So it doesn't say CPU in memory. I think I still have this one up. Notice here it says CPU in memory. So that's dark red or dark brown, Maria? You so it's dark green. <laughs> dark green. Oh, oh, it was completely off. All right. But notice it's, it's dark versus, um, we had a chuckle about that yesterday, versus a normal CPU, which is a light green. Light green. Yeah. Light green. And also we can see that we, we did our, we did IO. So we have IO, the amount of the number of requests and the amount of IO. And then we can see that uh, it made up in this case, 22% of that total activity. So it's very simple then to, to identify that, hey, this didn't go in memory and we did a bunch of IO and that's probably one of the big reasons that this took so much longer than um, our in-memory query. And so, and actually I, I'm pretty sure they're exactly the same query. I did all the row counts and I was going through my um, activity, but I didn't have a, the system any longer up and running, but notice we went from just out of curiosity, 23 minutes to only 3.3 minutes. So database and memory provided a significant uh, improvement in the query time of that execution plan. And with this, it makes it pretty easy to see why, which is uh, again, kind of hopefully the takeaway you can get from taking a look at this. So let me close out these guys. Yeah. So Andy, I guess it's safe to say that if you see that IO going on on a step in the plan that you expect it to be coming from the in-memory column store, that's a massive indicator that things are not going as you thought and that you should investigate that. Maybe the object isn't fully populated or perhaps uh, th there may be other reasons for it, but generally it's a really quick indicator to see that it's not perhaps used in the column store. It is, that's a great segue. I'll skip forward and I'm gonna go, I'll go to this one. I have this one set up just for that. I wanted to, I had to, this was actually a real one. I wanted to hide some of the, um, make sure that the customer that I got this from doesn't, isn't noticed. But notice from that segue, table access in memory full, 
uh, we have CPU, but notice we've got some I.O. going on, and we can see here that we have non-in-memory CPU, and we have I.O. going on. And so what actually happened in this particular case is this is off of a uh, customer that had a two-node rack, and they didn't, the query didn't go parallel, so they got basically half their data from the column store on the node they were running from, and then the rest of the data had to come from IO because it couldn't access the data in the other column store on the second rack node. So yeah, so if you see um, non-in-memory CPU, uh, IO, or maybe other contention or something else uh, in the activity bar, you can say, well, that's a red flag. We didn't take advantage of database and memory for something that we expected, in this case, table access and memory full to be able to, to use. And so, yeah, that's a, uh, another great way very quickly to be able to identify that. That's not something that's that easy to figure out uh, without a SQL Monitor Active Report because you were really looking at um, the IO and how much time that, uh, that added to the query. So, Thank you. Great. No, and I guess it's a good reminder to folks that just because you see table access and memory full, it indicates that we think some or all of the data will come from the column store, but there's no guarantees, as you said, without looking at the SQL Monitor report or that activity. Right, because it could be, uh, in this case, rack, uh, and since we need to use parallels, parallel query to access the data in um, in one or more or, or two or more rack nodes um, because we distribute that data uh, across the rack cluster. But it may also be that um, not all of the data got populated in the column store. So maybe you um, either didn't, uh, you know, maybe ran, the column store ran out of memory, um, so you didn't populate the entire object. And this is an easy way to identify that, oh, yeah, so maybe we need to go look they, maybe we didn't notice in the alert log that we got our message saying the column store was full. Um, you know, whatever, Oracle's a complicated uh, uh, system, so it could be for various reasons, but that would be worth then investigating to see um, what happened, why, why we didn't use the column store for that query or all of the column store. So let me, go ahead, we don't need that guy anymore. And then uh, I did want to point out um, a parallel query. So let's take a look at, I had another one, again, a flash version. But um, one of the nice things about SQL Monitor reports are, and I guess SQL Monitor in general, is that if you do have parallel parallelization, not only notice that it says, you see all these little guys here and says degree of parallelism is two. So you can know what the actual degree of parallelism that the query ran with. Um, and you actually see that we have a parallel plan here. And one of the nice things about SQL Monitor reports are that you don't have to go collect the data on the different nodes. Uh, we track all of that and put it together uh, on whichever node you run the query from. Uh, you can actually run the SQL Monitor report and actually see across all of the nodes. And notice there's an, a parallel tab here even that's been added. And if you click on that, you can actually see what happened. Notice we have a DOP of two. So we had two parallel sets and you can see what took place within each of those. And you can highlight the, the uh, expand on each of the groups, highlight again, we can see we use CPU and memory. Uh, we also use non uh, CPU because we actually did a whole bunch of other work within the um, query plan. But the bottom line is that, um, uh, it makes it very easy to dissect a parallel query as well. And I think uh, I wanted to keep this relatively short. I don't know if we have any questions, but the one, two, two other things I'd, I'd really like to show is um, something that uh, I tell people they normally won't see unless in memory is enabled and uh, something we call in memory aggregation or vector group by. And so again, SQL monitor active reports give, oh, by the way, you can move things around. So I always tend to move the line number over, get it out of the way. But notice that we can see that we created key vectors as part of uh, a vector group by, and then we can see that we used vector group by and applied all those key vectors. And notice here, uh, that's a, another good segue, 99%. Uh, so we literally did almost all of the work of this query in the scanning and uh, of the uh, our line order table, 
cable access in memory full. And so we did basically about as fast as you can run a query in Oracle database, use, uh, which is using database and memory and in doing essentially all of the work within the column store. And so that's one of the, of course, one of the great things about um, not only database and memory, but uh, uh, things like in-memory aggregation is that we're able to leverage not only the scanning of the tables, but also some optimizer features uh, can be leveraged uh, with database and memory. And so uh, all of that information is very easy, I think, to access and see and dissect. And there's binoculars. You can see that we created a key vector and some of the information and statistics about that. And um, again, I would recommend playing around, creating a couple SQL Monitor reports and playing around with all the different tabs. Uh, don't hesitate to click on things and, and you can get additional information. It's funny how even if you just hover over areas, you can see additional information. So um, it's very, um, I think a very powerful tool. And one, Last thing I'd really like to show is something I mentioned earlier. Uh, where'd my join groups go? Uh, there it is. In 12.2, one of the features we added to help speed up database memory was something we called join groups. And um, one of the, uh, it's, so it's because join groups are, are part of the execution, it, it isn't really all that easy to figure out whether you use join groups. I'm just going to say it. So we've done a couple of blog posts. Uh, and I think we might have included in our hash join uh, Ask Tom session some information about join groups as well. But um, if you've enabled join groups, uh, you can actually see whether you use them in uh, these binoculars. So the binoculars come up under the other column. And if you just click on it, you can see in this case, columnar encodings leveraged. And that says, a little cryptic, but that says that we used a join group for this query. It's also possible in the documentation, and I think in the, one of the examples I have, the, um, you can mine the XML, which is actually where this is kept, uh, to get the same information. But it's actually pretty easy just to click on the binoculars and say, oh, if you know what you're looking for, and we tell you columnar encodings uh, observed and leveraged, uh, if we've set that, then you know that you use the a join group for your query. And so that's um, just another um, aspect that uh, the SQL Monitor actor reports provide you know, quite a bit of information about uh, how the query runs. And again, we see that uh, CPU and memory, so we did pretty well with this query leverage most of the time, a little bit of time sorting, but most of the time spent um, in in memory, in CPU and memory. So, um, and with that, I kind of ripped through most of the examples I had um, that I wanted to highlight. I wanted to keep this session kind of short, but I was hoping that we get uh, um, uh, some good information about this. Um, if we, do we have, if we don't have any other questions, then I, we can hang around for a few minutes. But that's pretty much, I think, all I had. Did, you, did I miss anything that you wanted to no, add? No, I, I think you hit on everything. There's no questions yet, but feel free to add them to the chat and I'll um, pose them to Andy, no problem for you. But I think if, while we wait for those to come in, Andy, it would be fantastic to kind of recap where you can get more information on all of this because- ah, Good point. As you said, I can use SQL Monitor if I've got the Diagon Tuning Pack, and it is fantastic. I, I know for sure it saved my bacon a bunch of times because when you see it visually, it's much easier to pick out this information than if you see it text-based. But if you don't have the Diagon Tuning Pack, everything we see here can be found if you use the DBMS XPlan package and use the display cursor function sure. inside of that. Um, and I know Nigel Bayless has a fantastic blog post on the advanced settings you can use to get additional information out of a DBMS X plan. Right. So you'll notice that you're setting a bunch of parameters there in the format, the third right. argument to that. Um, and so Nigel's got a great blog post on what they are and how to get that information. Uh, I've got one on sqlmaria.com as well. Um, and so you also, though, have a great 
uh, paper. Do you want to point to that again, where the folks can get information on generating this? Oh, yeah. Well, as I say, because the um, uh, the SQL, I think I have it in here somewhere. The SQL tuning guide um, is really, I yeah, I think I have it over here. Um, has all of this information as well. Uh, Deep yeah. talks about both. There's a whole chapter on SQL Monitor um, and uh, part of it being the active report portion of it. Um, and then I'm pretty sure, to be honest, I, I definitely in the um, PL SQL packages and types reference, all of the information both about the DBMS SQL Monitor package and DBMS X plan, if you're going to go that route, are, are documented there along with all of the options. And so I picked just a kind of this covers a, most of the the areas that I want but the, uh, to usually highlight but there are a whole host of pluses and minuses for different aspects of an execution plan that you can highlight in DMIMS X plan so yeah it's worth it's worth a read in the in the PL SQL packages types and reference the SQL tuning guide being near to dear your heart I'm pretty sure they go through DMIMS X plan in there as well don't they they do. Um, they don't cover it to the same level of detail as uh, Nigel does or um, your, your blog post, does. Right? but the guidance to, to use that tool or to use SQL Monitor absolutely comes in the SQL tuning guide. Yeah. And I guess I should highlight because I think I have both the, and so this is again back to our uh, resources page, which in our blog, which I try to uh, keep up to date with. Um, I kind of like to call it the portal to all things database and memory. So we have a lot of our white papers, um, this technical brief that I showed you that kind of describes how to use SQL Monitor. And of course we have uh, the Optimizer blog, which is Nigel Bayless, who's the um, Optimizer PM. His blog, uh, which uh, Maria originally, I guess, had a whole bunch of posts on. So there's lots of Optimizer-ish uh, information there, including DBMS X plan, and SQL Monitor, and then of course Maria's own blog, which is right there. So if you want to click on that, uh, and she, you've also done several SQL Monitor blog posts and, and a couple of videos too, I think, right? Yeah. So I, I did something very similar to you, a little bit more basic than what you've just done, um, just to kind of walk people through what information is available there. How do I move columns around and stuff like that? Drill in and see additional information. So. Uh, I have that and I also have one that details DBMS X plan because I do appreciate that not everybody may have access, whether it's just they don't have the privilege to get to EM within their own organization. No, that can be an issue too. Yeah. The organization just doesn't have the Diagon tuning pack and we don't want to get anybody into trouble by no. uh, encouraging <laughs> something that they're not licensed for. So um, yeah, you can check it out there on either the Optimizer blog or SQL Maria. Right, great. Okay, and um, that's all I have. So if we don't have any questions. Or we'll, uh, I, I thought it would be kind of fun just to have a, a little shorter, pure technical uh, talk today. And um, uh, if there's no other questions. Hopefully, everybody will have a happy holidays, and um, we'll talk to you in the beginning of the new year. Awesome. Thanks, Andy. All right.